So hi dear students. So welcome to the next lecture on electromagnetic waves. So today we will be discussing about energy and momentum in electromagnetic wave. Okay. So um, uh, we have already seen that uh, the monochromatic wave or monochromatic uh, the plane wave, the, the electric field, the complex representation of electric field propagating along the direction z at time t. We can write as e zero tilde e raised to i. Kz minus omega t and uh, the b tilde we can write z comma t b zero tilde e raised to i kz minus omega t so remember the z component of both the electric field and the magnetic field would be zero and uh, the magnetic field connected with the electric field direction of magnetic field and electric field are connected through this equation or the magnitude of the magnetic field is equal to E0 by C. So hence uh, this B tilde of ZT, we can also be written as K cross E tilde by omega. Okay, and we have also drawn uh, the, the corresponding, the schematic diagram of uh, the electromagnetic wave. So next uh, we can discuss uh, about what is the energy stored and what is the momentum carried by the electromagnetic wave? So first we can discuss energy. So remember an electromagnetic wave has both the electric field and magnetic field. So the energy density in the electric field, usually we can write half epsilon zero E square. And uh, the energy stored in the magnetic field would be one by two mu zero B square. So therefore, the total energy density of electromagnetic wave would be half epsilon zero E square plus B square by mu zero. Okay, now uh, what is B? So B, the magnitude of B would be equal to magnitude of electric field by C or it can also be written as root of mu zero epsilon zero e. So in that way, we can write is equal to half epsilon zero e square plus b square become mu zero epsilon zero e square divided by mu zero. So mu zero cancels, so we'll get um, half epsilon zero e square plus half epsilon zero e square. So that become simply epsilon zero e square. So the total energy density of electromagnetic wave would be simply equal to epsilon zero e square. Now the one thing you can uh, note on here is um, the total, total uh, energy of electromagnetic wave contains two parts, the energy of electric field plus energy of magnetic field. And since the magnetic field uh, and the electric field are connected, that through this equation, the, uh, the contribution from the, uh, the electric field and the magnetic field are same for the, the total energy of electromagnetic wave. Okay, so that means uh, the both the electric part and the magnetic part carry same energy uh, in the case of electromagnetic wave. And the total energy density would become epsilon zero E square. Okay, now we can have uh, the real notation for the electric field. So this is a complex notation that what we have written here. The real notation for the electric field E at Z T, we can write um, E zero cos of K Z minus omega T plus delta. Okay, so therefore epsilon zero E square will become epsilon zero E zero square cos square omega t minus kz plus delta. Okay, so we have got the total energy density of uh, the electromagnetic wave. Okay, then uh, next we can discuss about uh, uh, the intensity. Or energy flux density. It is given by the pointing vector S. So the pointing vector S is E cross B. 
divided by mu zero. Okay. Now uh, and we already know that uh, B is K cross E upon omega. So therefore this become E cross K cross E by omega. So the uh, E cross K cross E can be simplified. You can uh, recall the back cab rule. So that is uh, A cross B cross C can be written as B times A dot C minus C times A dot B. So this is what is called the back cab rule B A C minus C A B. Okay, so in that way, you can find the expression for the pointing vector S. So in the place of A, E is coming. In the place of B, K, the place of C, E. So in the place of B, K is coming, so K can be taken out here. Then A dot C become E dot E minus E, E dot K divided by omega. Now in case of uh, electromagnetic wave in vacuum, the electric field and directional propagation are perpendicular. So therefore this term would become zero. And hence we'll get the expression K by omega E dot E or K by omega is nothing but uh, uh, one by C. So it become E square by C unit vector K because omega by K is C. Okay, so the finally the, uh, the pointing vector S or the intensity equal to E square by C and direction is along K and uh, that K we can also write as Z because we assume that uh, the electromagnetic wave is propagating along Z direction. So that is why uh, we can either put uh, k cap or z cap okay now once you got the expression for the pointing vector from that we can uh, find out the expression for the the momentum density so it's uh, derivation is uh, not required for us so we can just remember the expression for momentum density so the momentum density the script p is given as pointing vector s by c square so that is a definition for uh, momentum density now the s is already known to us so s have you written s is e square by c this is e square by c and uh, what is energy density is epsilon zero e square Okay, now we can write um, S in terms of energy density also. The so S, we can write uh, uh, E square by C. So energy density is uh, epsilon zero E square. So I think some uh, term is missing here. I think while we have written S is e cross b by mu zero okay one mu zero is missing here that is the problem okay there is a b we have written k cross e by omega but we have forgot to write mu zero so that is why it is slightly inconsistent so the e square by mu zero c would be better okay so s is uh, e square by mu zero c so e square can be written as um, u by epsilon zero so e square is the energy density of electromagnetic wave divided by epsilon zero mu zero c. Now what is uh, the relation between epsilon zero mu zero with the c? The c square 
is 1 by mu 0 epsilon 0 so therefore this become finally s is c times uem along the direction okay then we can write uh, the momentum density in terms of energy also so the, the pointing vector is c times uem direction along z divided by c square therefore this can be written as uem the energy density by c it's a momentum density okay so now we have got all the expressions the energy density of electromagnetic wave is simply epsilon zero e square which is equal to epsilon zero e zero square co square kz minus omega t plus delta and uh, the pointing vector the energy flux density is c times uem along z direction and the momentum density is u e m by c direction along z okay now this is uh, uh, the function of time okay so u e m if you look at this expression it is a, a function of cos square it varies cos square with respect to time so it is an uh, varying function the time dependent function okay but uh, usually we'll not, we cannot find uh, the instantaneous values of uh, the energy density or uh, the, the energy flux density or momentum density, but we can find only the, the, the time average because uh, all our instruments will have uh, a response time that will not be instantaneous. It, it requires some time to respond to the, the light. So usually we can uh, see the time average of uh, all these measurements. So we can find the time average. Usually we'll denote by symbol this way. So the time average of F can be written as one by T integral zero to T F of T dt. Okay. Let me see you will sum uh, the function over a time period divided by the time period. That will give uh, the time average. So if you find the time average of uh, the energy density, what will you get? Okay, so here epsilon zero is a constant e0 square is also a constant. So if you integrate cos square over a time period, cos square kz minus omega t plus delta dt divided by t. Okay, so that gives uh, the, the time average of cos square function. The time average of cos square function is always one by two. So hence this become half epsilon zero e zero square. So this would be the, the average energy density of electromagnetic wave. Similarly, we can find out uh, the average energy density of, uh, so sorry, the average uh, energy flux density. S that would be equal to C times the average of UEM direction Z. So this become C times half or better we can write in this way, half epsilon zero C times E zero square direction Z. And the, the average, the time average of momentum density would be one by two C epsilon zero E zero square directions along Z. Okay, so we have almost completed our discussion about uh, the, the energy and uh, the momentum of uh, the chromatic wave. Okay, now remember this, uh, the average uh, uh, value of the time average of uh, the energy flux density is also known as intensity. Remember, S is nothing but the energy crossing unit area through unit time. Okay, so if you find its time average, we'll get the intensity. Okay, so this intensity can be directly measured in our experiment. So once you can find the intensity, you can calculate the, the amplitude of the electric field. So that is that way we can connect our theory to the experiment. 
okay so these are the something we can directly measure okay now uh, not only uh, so okay since uh, the electromagnetic carries momentum it can exert pressure on uh, surface okay so in order to find the expression for pressure exerted by the electromagnetic wave you have to consider a system so consider uh, the electromagnetic wave is confined in the cylinder which is having area a and its length is c into delta t so that means in within delta t time all the electromagnetic wave which is inside uh, of the cylinder will uh, incident on the surface okay so all the electromagnetic wave within the cylinder will incident on the surface so what will be the volume of the cylinder so the volume of the cylinder would be equal to area into length so area into c into delta t then what will be the total momentum of the electromagnetic wave stored in the cylinder the total momentum we can denote by symbol capital p that will be equal to the momentum density into a c delta t okay so suppose uh, this uh, surface is a perfect absorber so if it is a perfect absorber then uh, uh, so all the momentum will be absorbed by the surface so therefore uh, uh, there will be change in momentum for the electromagnetic wave so initially there is some momentum once it incidence on the surface uh, it absorbs its momentum get zero okay so hence uh, the force we can write the rate of change of momentum okay uh, so we have to use uh, the the expression the expression p or letter p for pressure so we have to use uh, some other term okay so better we can use small p for momentum okay the so force would be equal rate of change of momentum and pressure we usually we use capital p that will be equal to 1 by a the rate of change of momentum okay so 1 by a the rate of change of momentum would be equal to so the uh, the initial momentum minus final momentum its magnitude so that would be the change in momentum divided by delta t okay so within delta t time what happens initially this is the total momentum uh, so this is the initial momentum and what would be the final momentum final momentum would be zero because all the electromagnetic wave would be absorbed by the surface so hence uh, this would be equal to 1 by a the initial momentum can be written as momentum density a c delta t divided by delta t so a cancels delta t cancels so that will simply equal to uh, the momentum density times c now what is the expression for momentum density momentum density is given by uh, the the energy density of electromagnetic wave so it's equal to energy density of electromagnetic wave divided by c times c so that will cancel so the the pressure would be equal to the energy density of electromagnetic wave okay now we can write uh, this in terms of intensity also okay so in, in the previous uh, example so we had seen that i equal to 1 by 2 epsilon 0 c e 0 square okay so the intensity is nothing but c times u e m so therefore u e m the average of u e m can be written as intensity divided by c so the pressure would be equal to intensity by c the pressure exerted on the perfect absorber pressure by electromagnetic wave on a perfect absorber now what would happen if it is a perfect reflector so instead uh, if the surface it's a perfect reflector what happens if it is a perfect reflector 
then uh, all the the light which incidence here would be reflected back okay so then uh, the final momentum will not be zero the final momentum would be equal to minus of the initial momentum because it will uh, go to the opposite direction so the final momentum would be opposite to the initial momentum so therefore this difference would be two times of the initial momentum and uh, the pressure would become 2i by c so the pressure by electromagnetic wave on a perfect reflector capital p become 2 i by c okay so those will be the expression for pressures okay on perfect absorber it will be i by c on perfect reflector it would be 2 i by c okay so that's all for now so we have uh, discussed a uh, very detailed uh, behavior of uh, electromagnetic wave so we have discussed about uh, the energy stored in electromagnetic wave uh, the the energy flux density and as well as momentum density and uh, the energy density is uh, seems to be the average energy density the time average energy density seems to be half epsilon zero e0 square so it depending upon the amplitude of the electric field and uh, this half and epsilon zero are constants and the energy flux density is also known as intensity its time average will become the c times of uh, the average energy density and that will it will become half epsilon zero c times e0 square and uh, the average momentum density become 1 by 2 c epsilon zero e0 square and finally uh, the pressure exerted on the surface by the electromagnetic wave would be i by c if it is a perfect absorber it would be 2 i by c if it is a perfect reflector okay so this expression may be required uh, while we are doing the numericals okay so we have to remember uh, these formulas otherwise we have to derive these formulas from the beginning okay uh, so we'll uh, come up with a um, uh, new topic in the next class so we'll be discussing about uh, the propagation of electromagnetic wave in media in linear media in next class so till now we have discussed only uh, the electromagnetic wave in vacuum so next we'll discuss the electromagnetic wave in linear media okay so see you then bye